Good morning and happy Sabbath to each one. I know that uh, the weather has changed and it's now getting colder each time. My wife and I uh, visited my son and his family in Chicago. And uh, for the first time in several years, we uh, have met with this uh, not really high uh, snow, but it was good enough to make us chill because it's very, very cold. Our body is no longer adjusted to the uh, weather in Chicago. We have been there for 17 years. Now our body is, uh, is uh, uh, what, how do you call that? <laughs> Acclimated here in uh, this part of uh, uh, California. I'd like to welcome all of you to our worship service today. And we would like to remind you that after the service, we have our, our potluck, and we call this actually fellowship meal. We'll be together and be able to, to uh, talk with your friends that you have not seen for seven days. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, just... Uh, a few announcements that I have here in my mind is that uh, first of all, we would like to thank you for supporting our uh, our, uh, our local church budget. Okay, and we have and then we have this for we were not able to reach our goal for the past month, but we hope that we will be reaching it this uh, this uh, uh, holiday season, especially Christmas uh, season. And uh, we have just to remind ourselves about our project to raise funds for our uh, AC system in uh, the fellowship hall and later on with the uh, young, young people. And uh, of course, we have uh, the Pathfinders. Today, is this today or what? Yes, this today, this afternoon maybe. So uh, we would like to inform ourselves that uh, we will not be having a, a prayer meeting for two, two Wednesdays. Prayer meeting next Wednesday and then two weeks after. Okay, last Wednesday and then two weeks after. All right, so uh, please remember, and we are also informing you that we are no longer meeting in the fellowship hall. We meet at the uh, uh, Spanish room room, so we will see you there uh, after one that is the last uh, Wednesday and then following two until the new year okay do we have anything uh, Pastor 
but you know everything is taken care of. So we would just like you to feel at home as we worship together today. Okay. Okay. And uh, we have been studying with our sister, Sister uh, Hermie, where is she? Okay, Sister Hermie. Can you, uh, can you please come up here and we will introduce you to our people, come on. Don't be embarrassed, these are your brothers and sisters. <laughs> okay. She has been receiving Bible studies with uh, Brother uh, Johnny and also myself in, in once in a while. And uh, she made a decision to accept our Lord Jesus Christ as her personal savior on her birthday tomorrow. <laughs> uh, maybe you did not hear the portion because you clapped your hand. Her birthday is tomorrow and he said, I want to be baptized on my birthday. Amen. And we are going to do that. So for now, we would like to uh, uh, welcome her to our fellowship in this church. And so is there any motion to uh, accept Sister Hermie to be a member of our church subject to baptism this, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, right? 10 o'clock. Okay, so is there any motion? Anybody from the... Okay, there is a motion and second. Okay, we have a lot of second. And those of you who are willing to accept her in our fellowship, why don't you just raise your hand and show it to us? Okay. <laughs> Sister Hermie, these are your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are happy that you will be a part of this uh, uh, fellowship, and which actually means, but may I just remind you, when you become a member of our church, you become a part of us. Okay, which actually means that uh, we do activities together and we eat together during the fellowship uh, uh, dinner, uh, lunch, and uh, if there is anything that we can do for you, let us know. And for now, I'd like to be faithful in attending church and also helping in the financial needs of this church. And uh, I just pray that you, God will bless you. And uh, uh, Pastor, can you pray for, for her? Our Father in heaven, today we are so excited about our sister's commitment to Christ and her decision that her new birth and her her birthday can be celebrated together. Amen. We pray that you will fill her with your spirit, that you would wash her heart clean. We trust you for her salvation and our salvation, and we trust that you will bless as we move forward together as a church family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And welcome to our church. All right, for our uh, call to worship, uh, may I just invite you to uh, join me in reading uh, Psalm chapter 100, a very short chapter, five verses. Okay, so let me read this. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made, made us and not we ourselves. We are his people in the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth and endures to all generations. May God bless the reading of his word, 
and we will now continue on with our worship service. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you that we can gather in your house of worship this morning, Lord. Lord, we come to you with humble hearts. We want to thank you for the gift of life that you have lavished upon each and every one of us. Lord, may you open our minds, our spirit, and our hearts, Lord. And thank you for the many blessings you have given us. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Our first and opening song will be Joy to the World. And one 
Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. Our offering today will be going to our local Adventist community services. People come in all shapes and sizes, and so do their needs. Adventist community services offers diverse services tailored to fit the needs of the vulnerable in their community. David walked into Joseph's Storehouse Food Pantry and ACS Center in Oklahoma. The staff soon learned that he had recently been released from prison and was saving money to rent an apartment. At the time, he was living in a tent near a creek just outside of town and had no way to cook. David chose food that was ready to eat out of the package. Realizing that more was needed, a volunteer invited him back the next day to pick up cooking items. The volunteer went shopping for items they didn't already have at the center and soon, David received a small cook stove, fuel, can opener, and cookware when he returned. ACS continues to assist David with food when he runs low and prays for his safety and for God's continued presence. Whether giving food and cooking gear, dental care, clothing, after-school tutoring, 
or English language skills, your ACS offering paves a pathway forward for someone in need. Ellen White shared, the Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them, follow me. Adventist Community Services Ministries mingle in our communities, bringing Jesus' good will to the people. Join us and become the practical hands and feet of God in our world. The deacons will now receive our offering. Our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day you've given us today. Thank you for a final day of break from a hard week of work and trials and tribulations. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to come together and to worship in your name. I thank you for the many blessings that you've given us throughout the week. And I thank you for the opportunity to give just a little bit of those blessings back to you in the form of our offering. Lord, I ask you to guide and bless and be with the offering today as it goes towards your work in our Adventist community services. Please help it to be a help to those in need, to those who are struggling and who need support. And I ask for you to help, to, to bless it and to help show and demonstrate your love. In your name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. Boys and girls, it's time for a children's story.
Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. So, I have a question. How many of you guys have prayed and prayed and prayed, but felt like there was no way your prayer would come true? Yes? Well, okay. I have a story for you that shows the true power of prayer. So, earlier this year, as you guys might know, me and a couple of my friends from school went on a mission trip to Bolivia, which is in South America. We've talked a lot about what we did there, but we haven't talked much about what came before that. So, I have another question. How many of you guys have gone to another country before? Yes? Oh, that's a lot of, okay. So, you guys know what a passport is, right? Basically like, um, think about it like a permission slip from school, except it's to visit another country. <laughs> so, to get to another country, right, you need that passport. Um, and after a while, like, you know, a few years it goes bad and you have to get a new one. So, mine had gone bad. Um, it expired, but I only had a couple months before I had to leave for my trip. Um, and all I did was stress about it, not coming on time and not being able to go on this mission trip. But my parents kept reassuring me and told me that everything will work out. They said, it'll come, so I was like, okay. I trust you, but deep down, I had so many doubts. I kept waiting, and you know, one month had gone by, and then two months, and sooner or later, it was the week that I was supposed to leave for my mission trip. Still, no passport. Luckily, my parents were able to get an appointment down in LA to hopefully get my passport expedited, which that was a miracle in and of itself, but the appointment, it was the same day that I was supposed to leave. So, stress and tension is high, and my doubts were even higher. And the night before my appointment, which was, again, the day I was supposed to leave, I prayed. I said, you know what, God? If, if this trip is really what you want me to do, then I know you'll come through, I know you'll clutch up, but if not, then I understand, and you know, either way I'll be okay. I'll leave this all up to you. So the next day comes, and we leave super early to get down to my appointment, and again, mind you, my flight is leaving that night. So when we get there, super early in the morning, we had to wait in a line that was way long. Like imagine Disneyland, except everyone there is miserable and just wants to go home. So <laughs> when we got there, I was still super, super doubtful. In my head, I'm thinking there's no way I'm going to get my passport. There's no way I'm going to be able to go. But I prayed again, and I said, God, it's all up to you. So fast forward maybe an hour, uh, probably two, and a security guard comes out, and with his big booming voice, he tells us all to lower our hopes. He says that it's really unlikely that we'll get our passports that same day. He told us that, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't count on getting our passports that day. And basically, I was told that I shouldn't count on being able to go that night. Um, he told us it might take up to two weeks, but I didn't have two weeks. I had maybe a couple hours. <laughs> so fast forward a few more hours, and we're finally inside the building. My doubts are still super high, but one more time I pray, and I say, God, it's all up to you. And you know what happened? By God's grace, I got my passport that day. So, and I was able to go to Bolivia, and I was super blessed. But boys and girls, I just want to tell you that God will do crazy things. He'll do things that you'll be thinking, there's no way. There's no way. But when you have that thought, you need to push it down and say, God, it's all up to you. You can go back to your seats now. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading today is found in Romans 5.8. I will be reading it from the New International Version. And it says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we are still sinners, Christ still died for us. 
For those who are able, please kneel. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. Um, thank you for another day of rest. Please be with us in our, in our service. Um, let your words speak through um, Reggie and open our hearts and minds to the message today. Um, please be with those who are not able to make it to church, whether it be because of their health or any issues that they have. Um, thank you for the rest of this day. In your name I pray, amen. amen. You know, it's, it's, perhaps you have noticed that we have a lot of changes for today, and that is, uh, Raz, <laughs> Raz was supposed to do the prayer, and, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> to do the uh, uh, offertory, but God is good. And also at this time, I'm not going to sing, because... Jasper is not here today, and he is in the bulletin. But uh, he is, uh, this two young people, Dan and Duban, will do the special music. And before they do that, let me introduce to you our speaker. Our speaker is a new man. He used to be a student, but now he'll be a teacher at at Adventist at uh, Armona Union Academy. And he'll be teaching grade seven and grade seven and seven and eight. Seven and eight. <laughs> okay, so uh, we would like to welcome him, although we, we are not the school, but we would like to welcome him to be one of the teachers of our young people in AUA. Now.
start their whispering about the one they're welcoming no one knows what it's soon to be as the angels start their whispering Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning. And it's always an honor and a privilege to be up here to uh, speak a message. And no matter how many times I'm up here, whether it's to give an announcement or a sermon, it doesn't get easy. Um, but i blessed that Pastor Martella prayed with me this morning. And I can tell you, Pastor, it helps. My butterflies are getting in line. 
So thank you. Uh, they are information. First things first, I want to thank the young people, uh, Michael, Dovan, and Daniel, for stepping in. I know it was last minute, but thank you for sharing your gifts and your talents and uh, helping us this, in this uh, service. And please pray for the Bassett family as they are sick, which is why Jasper couldn't be here this morning to give our uh, special music. So keep them in your prayers, because I know they are in mine. As uh, Pastor uh, uh, Ombal has said, I will be starting a career at the academy as the seventh and eighth grade teacher, which is a blessing to me, because as you guys know, I've always wanted to be a teacher. And that's why I went to school for, even though it's not the grade level that I want, but you know what? I'm going to take it as a starting point, Amen. and I, I am blessed, and God has good plans. And I can honestly say that the career that I picked is the one that God wants me to be in. So I praise him. So with that being said, young people, I told you this in Sabbath school. When I started off with a pop quiz, all right? Now, if you don't get these questions right, what happens? No lunch. That is correct. By the way, I'm just kidding. Okay, just kidding. All right? <laughs> See, they know me so well already. Okay, so here's the first question. You guys are, uh, you guys know the popular music of today, correct? Yeah, okay. Now, there are three words that are used f most frequently in today's pop music. And here are your hints, okay? First word, the most frequent used, frequently used is in my message today. What is it? Love is the first one. What's the second word? And they're all four-letter words. Second one is baby. Okay? And it's not the baby you guys are thinking of in terms of infancy. Okay? It's not that. And the third most frequently used word is yeah. And if we put all three together, we can come up with baby, I love you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when we really look at this sentence, and it, when it talks about love, it does not have much depth to it. And as humans, especially in this day of age, we are in a way obsessed with love or the idea of love. But I can tell you, brothers and sisters, that God is also love. And when we look in our Bibles, aside from Dr. Laura Villavaso, and I said this in my sermon not too long ago, what does the Bible stand for? Can anyone remember? Basic information before leaving earth. Amen. So yes, basic information before leaving earth. And when we read our Bibles and we look at what love is to God, we can see that it's different than what we humans perceive. When we look at God's love, it is the real thing. And when we look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, God is love. 
And what that means is God will always act fairly and unselfishly. He will do what is right and best for those he created. And like our scripture reading this morning in Romans 5.8, but God commends his own love towards us in that while we were yet, what? Sinners, Christ died for us. What a beautiful verse. And I wish I could end my sermon here, but I can't. Okay. So, how deep our Father's love is pretty much based on the story found in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. Who here is familiar with that story? If you're not familiar, it's the uh, story of the prodigal son. A parable, right? And I always find it amazing that when Jesus wants to share deep things about God, about his kingdom, and about faith, he always uses parables. And in this story about the prodigal son, I will be breaking it into three parts. Part one the son's journey. And please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11. And it reads, Then he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And so he divided to them his livelihood. I'm going to pause here for a bit. So in verse 12, we see that the younger son asked his father to give him his inheritance. And normally how inheritance work is that we have to wait, right, till that person passes. Normally. But in this case, with the youngest son, He was basically coming up to his father as he was dead, right? He comes up to him like this. Hey, dad, you know, like, you know, when you die, you know, I will get your money, also get other things. Yeah, I can't wait, and I want it now. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I could not do this to my dad or to a loved one. And I'm pretty sure that if I said that to my dad or a loved one, I would get kicked out, I would be written off, I would be berated, and I would have no contact with my family. Now, for those of you guys who are the youngest in your family, how many of you will be bold enough to demand your inheritance early? Good, no show of hands. Now I'm going to pick on the fathers here. If your youngest child were to come up to you and demand their inheritance just as what the son just did, what would you do? Would you, how many of you would give him his inheritance early? No? Okay. How many of you would kick him out of the house? Okay. All right. So what the dad did was what? Gave it to him, which to me was crazy. Because I know if I had a kid, I'd be like, see you later. Don't talk to me. But no, this dad did something totally different. He gave his inheritance to the son. And when we go to verse 13, after granting the request, what did the son do? Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. So yes, the son gathered all these things and he left home. Why? 
because he wanted to live in that country. And that wild country is the world. He wanted to be part of that world. He wanted to experience that world. And then he would embark on a journey of self-indulgence and extravagance. Brothers and sisters, the world will offer pleasures for a time. But eventually, it would deliver emptiness and despair. How many times in our lives have we sought fulfillment in the wrong places? How many times have we chased pleasures that were just temporary? And then how many times have we been left spiritually bankrupt? I don't know about you, but I can relate to some of these things. And this journey that the prodigal son would go through would serve as a powerful reminder that the world's allurements can never replace the infinite love and joy found in our Heavenly Father. That ends part one. Part two. The son's descent and the road to repentance, starting at verse 14. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So soon, right after, he left his father. He squandered his wealth in reckless living and did not even think about the consequences that would happen because of his actions. How many here have lived in a time of famine or experienced it? No one? So as we know through our history, when people go through times of famine, life becomes hard, right? Food becomes scarce. And if there's food, what happens? Prices soar. And what about the people? The people's attitudes change, right? Because the mentality is survival of the fittest. And when we look at the prodigal son, when he was in this, when he put himself in this desperate circumstance, he didn't know what to do. He was poor, hungry. And then how many of you guys have put yourself in a situation of your own making where you would be found desperate? I know I have. And when I put myself in a desperate situation, you know, we try to do something about it. And we go on to verse 15, what the son do? So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. Talk about a big downturn. And how many of you guys would say that he deserved this? Raise your hand. How many of you would feel sorry for him? For me, he deserved it. Do I feel sorry for him? No. But then, when I sit down and think about it, I just realized that at this low point in his life, he would realize his mistake, which would then be a turning point in his life. From verses 17 to 19, 
It says, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am no longer worthy to be your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And as we see at this low point in his life, the son is broken. But yet he would find humility as he realized his choices were wrong and decided to return to his father's house. How many times do we we think about, I wish there was a reset button, go back to a point in our lives where we didn't make a certain decision or choice? How many of you guys would want a reset button? I know I do. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Also, by looking at this story, there's only one word that I can think of. It's called repentance. The son doesn't merely acknowledge his wrongs. He would take intentional steps to turn away from his past and journey back to the one who loves him unconditionally. And likewise, our Heavenly Father eagerly awaits our return when we turn away from our sins and seek his forgiveness. The last part. A father's love. Now, young people, you're up again. Another pop quiz. What was the word that I thought of about this story? What was it? Repentance, yes, you are correct. Now you guys can get lunch. You're welcome. Okay. Yes, repentance is the word that I believe is the heartbeat of this parable. And we see this through the response of the father due to his son's return. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and kissed him. I don't know about you guys, but I found that a surprise. I thought for sure the father would react differently. I gave him a pass in the beginning, saying, okay, he just gave it to him. Okay, that's fine. But I, but I was pretty sure, or I was confident that the father would act differently when his son came back. But no, the father reacted differently than what I expected. The father did not turn his son away. And for all the fathers here, how many of you would welcome back your child after all the things that he has said and done? And how many of you would not? So instead of berating or condemning his son, the father what? Celebrated his son's return. And from verses 21 to 24, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said, to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us have a feast and celebrate. And this 
extravagant act symbolizes God's immeasurable mercy and grace. God's love for us is beyond comprehension. No matter how far we've strayed or how deep we've fallen into sin, God eagerly awaits our return, ready to embrace us with open arms. And God's love is not based on our performance, but on his unfailing character. And one would think this would be the end of the story, right? And on a good note, they celebrated. No, it doesn't end there. Jesus would introduce to us another character. And that was the older brother. And when I looked at this part of the story, I was trying to figure out a theme about the older brother. So I was like, wit's end, I started looking online to see what other preachers, you know, thought about this part of the story. And I bumped into one, and, it, and he called it the parable of the pouting son. So from verses 25 to 30, it says, Meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked them what was going on. He said, your brother has come home, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has come back safe and sound. And what happened with the older brother? What was his reaction? The older brother became angry and refused to go in. And so his father went out and pleaded with him, But he answered his father, look, all these years I have been slaving for you, and I have never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could go celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who had squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, and yet you killed the fattened calf for him, Maybe some of you guys can relate to the oldest son. Yes, he stayed with the father and had done what he had thought he was supposed to do. But here is where you can see the heart of the characters. Yes, the older brother followed rules. But in his own way, he was rebelling against his father. Why? Because he didn't trust him. Maybe he thought he was the favorite son now that the younger son went away. But when we look over verses 25 to 30 again, we can see what was in that older brother's heart. Not once did it say he was relieved that his brother was back safe and sound. But like the father said, To the older son, this son was dead and is now alive. So, in conclusion, in our own individual way, we have gone to God and we insulted him. The love and gifts that he has given us, we just throw them away. But even so, Do you know what God wants for us? He wants us to be home. And he wants us to know that we are loved by him. And as hard as it must have been for that father to let go of his son, it almost seems like he knew that he needed to go and try it his own way. But you know what? I think the father probably knew that it would end badly for his son. So he was waiting for him to return home. And no telling how long the father waited and waited and watched for his son on the road. 
And I don't know where your mindset is today, brothers and sisters, but if your mindset is this, and you're thinking that you have gone so far away from God that he would never want to take you back, I want you to pause for a moment and ponder and hear these words. That it doesn't matter if you are broken or if you feel ashamed about the things you have done. No matter how far you have tried to run away, no matter how badly you have failed, I want you to remember this. God loves you and will always be standing there waiting to see you return home. And when he sees you, it'll be like he runs to you with a hug, arms open to welcome you. That is the kind of love that God has for you. You are his child. And nothing, nothing will ever change that. us of the boundless grace and forgiveness available to us through Jesus Christ. 
Let us turn away from the empty pursuits of this world and run into the loving arms of our Heavenly Father. Lord, please be with each and every one of us. Pray that we wait for your soon return. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen.